Here you are. I brought, you, I brought home to you in the first slide here. Um, how many people in the room are going to be applying for category A projects? B? Oh, C? Ooh, lots of C's. Good. OK, so I have a lot of information to share with you um, over the next hour. And what we've done is we've lowered the lights in front here so that you could see the slides better, because you can't see color unless you can see it. So we had to get rid of that. So I'm glad you're all here. And we will begin. And let me begin by saying that color is one of the most important and most powerful elements in our environment. Exciting use of color can define an area and also influence the way people feel about it. One of the most effective ways to beautify your town is to have color in your landscapes. And the most important place to have that is in your entrances. So that when people enter your town, they'll see that you have pride in your community and maintain it for their pleasure as well as yours. You can aspire to do great things like plant flower quilts that can be seen by pedestrians walking by or by motorists going 25 or 35 miles an hour. This is in Akron, Ohio, and they do barn quilts. Have you ever seen those? And they do these huge flower quilts. Or you just may want to spell out the name of your town. And here on a hill, you can easily see the Adjuratum, Alyssum, and uh, Red Waxwing Begonia spelling out Coshocton, Ohio, which tells you that their town hall is up there in that building up on the hill. Or you can aspire to do big signs of your town. And here in Akron, Ohio, this is bordered by volunteers, not boxwood. <laughs> So you can also have color just with foliage. So here we have sweet potato vine, uh, both uh, yellow and black. And we can see the filigree of the cosmos there. And then we pick up that dark color in the bananas, both the undersides of the leaves and the petioles. This is in downtown Chicago. And the businesses take care of that planting. So we're going to talk about a showing of flowers today. And the judges are coming, and you're not going to see them. They're going to come into town unannounced. They're going to look at your projects. They're going to make notes. They're not only looking at the specific projects you're doing, they're going to be looking at the color throughout town when they enter. So it's the whole thing they're looking at, and that's why we have this special award. So when we, we are going to go on a journey. And I did want to tell you that I did go on a journey this summer to the Isle of Guernsey. And this is what I saw. They had flowers. They just blew me away. So this is downtown. Let's, before we go on our journey, let's just look at some basics and cover them. Here we have the color wheel. Make sure that when you are, trying, when you are designing your beds, you use complementary colors on the opposite side of the color wheel. That does look best. And it gives you that pop. Um, and there aren't any glaring colors if you do that. Here in Washington, Missouri, they, um, of course, want to take statues of George Washington, their namesake, and have little sitting areas that they make. And they have uh, matching containers on either side, left and white. And they have a canna as the thriller. And then they have the, um, it looks like Blackie, as the spiller. And then they have African marigolds. And it looks like... And no, I don't know what that is, African marigolds um, as the filler inside. So perhaps it is the name of your town, or you have some other theme you want to follow. You can do that with plants, with color, and bring people from place to place throughout your town. Now let's start at the beginning of the season. Let's start in spring. We could start with Columbine exciting people about color in the gardens. It's not annuals, it's perennials. And then we can go on in spring thinking of bulbs. And then we can move on to summertime, where we have daylily and hostas and sedums and color. And you can see the seeding area in the back with your pop of color with annuals. As we move into fall, we move into mums, asters, and then cut flower stalks and color there. 
And then moving into winter, we can plant boxwoods in pots. We could plant red twig dogwoods in pots. If we can't plant in pots, we can just stick branches of evergreens in pots and twig, redwood, red, um, red twig dogwood in pots. We could put hellebores in pots. They are really tough plants and you have a great foliage for the winter time and then something that's gonna bloom in late February or March. The important thing is never have an empty pot. Either fill it or take it away. So when you think about containers, think bigger and taller as better. And here we have Goshen, New York. Is anyone here from Goshen? Okay, well, you're, close your ears. <laughs> close your ears. Because here they have a lot of fillers in this container, but there's no thriller and there's no spillers. So we're going to give Goshen a C, Peter. Go back and tell them. <laughs> But imagine having an evergreen in the middle of this container with the backdrop of your brick wall. That would be quite attractive. And then you have this wonderful licorice plant as your spiller and um, lots of different color and texture in this display. And you can see the display is growing and it's spilling out onto the ground. And the hostas and the astilbes are being joined by dianthus and begonias. You also may want to look at what you're growing in your beds as far as annual flowers go and make sure that those annual flowers are in your containers and vice versa, that what's in your containers, you have those plants go back into the beds as well. So here we have a planting at Sullivan County Community College of planters and they have a thriller. It looks like Dracaena in there, the quintessential thriller that we all remember from our childhood um, with some petunias and sweet potatoes. But watch out for the sweet potatoes because they will eat up your planters. In St. Louis, they think big. And look at this big container. It's got to be 10 feet tall. So it's a huge container to begin with. And they put papyrus in the middle as their thriller. And then they have the fuzzy leaved um, Argentia, uh, Salvia argentii there. They have Dichondra silver falls spilling out. And they have um, some begonias in there. And it was just outstanding. And then in just in our downtowns, we can have the old fashioned, beautiful look of just whiskey barrels. It works, it's less expensive. It's a container in town and that's really important. They're big, they hold a lot of soil. And here we have the thriller, we have alyssum um, inside and we have petunia spilling over. I do wanna take a minute to talk about this though. This is red, the evil red mulch. Don't use the evil red mulch because all I see is red mulch. I don't see the pink petunias. I don't see anything in that barrel. That color red is big and bold and it takes your eye away from anything else. Use black, use brown, use natural. Don't use red. Yes. They do have heavy metals in the dyes, which is another reason. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. Don't use it. That's right. So here we have a nice full container. Um, and this is what the judges are looking for. Um, here we have a little bit of everything. But look at the color. Look at the fullness. And, and you'd say, wow, someone's taking care of that. They're fertilizing it for sure. And we just talked about the color red. Look how bold that is. And here you have your coleus. And you can see that they planted some zinnias in there. They have hostas. They have a shrub. So they're really starting to get. Now, is this anybody's town? Because I wasn't going to mention towns. Go ahead. Where is it? It is Roscoe's Planters. <laughs> I had so much fun looking through all the slides. Um, and uh, as we tr journey along, let's take a look at this. And this is in, in uh, Saskatoon, um, up in Canada. And they had this area where they didn't want pedestrians to be. So they had bollards um, set up, and it looked kind of ugly. So they got these big black containers, which match the color of the bollards, and they put them out there. And they filled their containers with ornamental grasses and with lots of petunias. And it really looks full. It's nice. And you want to walk down this sidewalk because it's inviting. 
think outside of the box with your containers, and it depends on where this is. But if you can find a nice big old antique container, I like it here with the Megilla Perilla and the Petunias. I think it's a great combination. It looks fantastic. Keep thinking outside of the box. What about that wheelbarrow you're gonna, you were going to throw out? Put some holes in the bottom. You have a nice movable feast. You can move it all over. I, I love, this was a florist's garden, and she has the old uh, uh, washing machine in the back filled. Everything was filled with flowers. It was hysterical. Now, way outside of the box, um, uh, this is in Forestburg, uh, Canada. They had, um, they, were, they were taking out all other agricultural equipment and using it. And here they took the manure spreader out and they filled it with plants. And then I like the little whiskey barrel, the little apostrophe on the left hand side on the cement pad. It's different. And it's exciting. And you walked, you went through this town, you drove through the town, and you started seeing all the different equipment in their different public parks. And it almost became, you know, a game that you played. Let's see if we could find them all today. Uh, you could also put color uh, very effectively right at eye level. So this is a sidewalk that had a, wa a wall, and then they had this fence up top, and you were pretty much walking with the flowers at your shoulder. And it was really cool to just turn to the right and see them. And this was in Guernsey, and they had a, the Isle of Guernsey, they had a beautiful mix. And at Sullivan County Community College, they got these beautiful containers, and then they put them up on the walls. They were a good size, they held a good amount of plants, so it doesn't necessarily mean they didn't dry out every day in July, you still had to water them, um, but they were very attractive. And by season's end, can't you just imagine that sweet potato all the way down to the ground, as it does by, by uh, the first frost? So, in Liberty, this could have been a really drab-looking sidewalk, but with some of these uh, planter boxes here, it, it looks safe, it looks secure, it looks pretty, and I want to walk past that. I want to be a part of that scene. Here in Warwick, New York, they have these huge containers that show you the office of this um, business in town. Now the only thing I would, see I'm picking on Orange County, sorry. The only thing I would have done here is I would have had um, these containers have mimic you know, some of the same plant material that was in here. This looks messy to me. So what if we had Dichondra Silver Falls in here too, and they picked up the petunias and put them in? Then it would have, it all, would have all flowed a little bit. So that's a pointer for you. And let's look at the other side of things. Now here in this town, they have a hanging basket on the roadside, but they didn't forget this side of the street, which was a parking lot to a food store, and they put some planter boxes here in a space where they had a pole anyway, and they wanted, you know, they didn't want people to bang into the, the tree, which is important, and they didn't want them to bang into the pole. So this worked for them on both sides, and there's a pop of color. You can just peek over the wall and see it. Sullivan Renaissance has been trying to um, improve our first impressions. As I mentioned in my very first slide, you know, color is really powerful and the first impression is really important. People come to Sullivan County, to the airport, to the short line bus, and what are they going to see? We hope they're going to see these huge containers of petunias that welcome them and say, hi, I'm, you're, you've landed and we have a great place to show you and we're proud of where we live. At Mohunk Mountain House, they do the same thing. They make sure that they have big containers of beautiful plants that are impe impeccably taken care of, and that's the same thing they do with their guests. They make sure that they are safe and secure and they're well taken care of, and that shows in every single um, inch of the place when you go. Yes. Go back. Mm -hmm. Soil. Plants want soil. They don't want, they don't want peanuts. They can't, they can't feed off of those. Um, they want soil. Fill it with soil. My favorite um, combination is, um, you know, you buy a bale of sunshine mix, of a grow mix. Um, it'll cost you about 40 bucks, you know, or less, depending on where you get it. And other things that you can add to it is compost. So that's going to take up 
you know, some room and take the cost away of trying to fill the big containers. The other thing you could do is go to an Agway or a Monticello Farm and Garden Center and ask them if they have turfus. If not, ask them to purchase it. It's a calcined clay that's used in ball fields that holds moisture. So you can throw a couple shovelfuls of turfus in as you're making your little recipe here, your soil mix. And then put some uh, Osmocote or Nutricote, which is even better because it starts to dissolve its fertilizer um, at a higher temperature. So you make that mix up and it'll be light and it'll be good and you want as much soil as possible because you're putting a lot of plants in and all those plants need the soil and they need the fertilizers that you're gonna feed them and they need to grow. So don't, don't put anything else. Yeah, the less soil. Mm -mm. No. No, they didn't want to use enough soil. Yes, Peter. Um, you, don't, you don't need to change it for the season. As long as you have Nutri-Coat in there, you just keep that. But you do need to put new soil in the next year. Sometimes you don't need to take all of it out, but you need to at least take out half of that soil mass and replace it. Very good question. Um, how often do you replace it? So once a year, at least half of it. Okay. And here in Narrowsburg, anybody here from Narrowsburg? Okay, is this familiar? Okay, and here they have a nice seating area, as we saw in Washington, Missouri. People are welcome. They, they, this is a safe place to come sit. We have flowers. We care about our community. Um, you know, come and enjoy. Listen to the listen to the uh, birds. Um, and, uh, and now I need my notes. <laughs> okay, anybody know where this is? Okay, tell me. Livingston Manor, thank you. This is the entrance to the pharmacy in Livingston Manor, and we have a container right outside the door, and they picked up the blue from this bluish gray of the, the building and their flowers. I don't know if they even knew that or not, but you did, and it looks great, and you have a well-maintained tree and a little lawn area, which when you have to the left a lot of flowers, it's nice to have a little green space to stop. It's almost like putting a blank slide in a presentation. It makes everyone stop for a minute. I won't do that, though, I promise. I only have an hour. So in, in Warwick, they have big containers. Um, they have won, they have been in the international competition um, for America in Bloom, and they know what works, big containers. In fact, their homeowners are copying their containers. They can't wait to see what the America in Bloom committee does every year, and then everybody goes around and goes to the same places where they grew the plants for these and say, and I want that Cleome, the white one, and I want that Calibracoa, or I want that, and uh, so they sell them. They have a very successful program. Um, and when I was up in uh, Gibbons, um, Alberta, I saw this. And I want to remind you that you want to look at new stuff. And I showed you, many of you who were here this morning, the uh, New Ideas book, which you'll all be leaving with if you didn't get it this morning. It's up on the front table. And that's just proven winners. But there's also Hort Couture. There's many different profit and non-for-profit companies that trial new plants every year. All American Selections is another one. And what does well? in Portland, Oregon, or Portland, Maine, will do well in Sullivan County because they've tested it all over the place. And we know the plants are tough, and they can handle many different weather conditions. So here they took this um, variegated ornamental corn and put it in this container. I was like, good, they're trying different things. That's what we have to do here. This is in the Czech Republic, in Schmirzi. And it's a very, a very expansive area of just block. And it could look very cold, but they've made the seating area with the planter in between. And it really has warmed up, not only with the colors of the yellow in there and a little bit of orangey red, but it's warmed up what could have been a really cold scene where you just wanted to walk through and didn't want to sit down. And uh, here in Never Sink, you know, there are necessary places we all go to. So why can't they be beautiful as well? This is their recycling center, and they're even thinking of their citizens coming when they have to go to the recycling center, and they're beautifying it. The judges would look at places like this. Back in the Czech Republic in Schwersi, they put, the win uh, they put some flowers in window boxes to pop the facade of this building. I think it would look pretty plain without the window boxes up there. 
And in northeast Pennsylvania, there really is um, petunias up here with uh, vinca. Um, and then there are window boxes filled with the same plant material here and their banners. This is their local radio station that blares all day long so everyone can hear the radio. There's a public park, Caddy Corner, across the street so they get to hear the radio there. And you can eat speedies, which are really great too. Anybody ever see an upside down tree? Oh, these are so much fun. And I still keep wondering, is it a container? Is it a hanging basket? What is it? And this was a fun garden in Ohio. And you could climb up there, which is how they got up to water it. And uh, it had petunias and sweet potatoes. And it had uh, heliopsis and all kinds of great plants in this upside down tree. How did they, well, they had, they actually, he was, um, he, it was rotten, which is why it fell down to begin with, and so it had this little bowl shape that was empty, a void in there. Um, and this was in Washington, Missouri as well. No, I'm sorry, Plymouth, um, uh, Ohio. And this Euonymus was climbing up this building, which is the first thing that caught my eye. So I could just imagine somebody out there with the scissors cutting around the windows so people could look out during the day. But then they have these wonderful, wonderful, big hanging baskets of petunias, which you can tell are fertilized and taken care of, watered well all the time. Um, and it just looked fantastic. This is the Isle of Guernsey, and the maritime weather definitely agrees with what they're doing there. They were the winners of the international competition last year for, for a community beautification. And uh, they're all parishes um, in the Isle of Guernsey, and this was St. John's Parish. So people definitely obeyed the, the speed sign because they had flowers all over it. Think about this in your own town. Are people going to pass through town? What if you put flowers through the town? What if you put them around your speed limit signs? They would have to see the sign, and they would say, wait, people are here that may be watering these plants. I think I better slow down. So think about that. Might work. Now, Seth was our intern a couple years ago, and he knew how to grow a good hanging basket. He watered it, didn't let it get stressed out between waterings, and he fertilized it weekly, and the baskets did really, really well. And uh, here, as we go through Neversink and to Gramsville, which has the, the Little World's Fair every year, this is the new library with beautiful hanging baskets. And those baskets are all the way down the corridor. They have hundreds of baskets every year because they have thousands of visitors that come and visit. And most of the places that I've gone to take these pictures are places where they may have a little niche, which we're about to have, we found out this morning from um, uh, Dr. Tarlow, that we're going to be the bagel capital of the world. So everyone's coming, folks, and we have to start showing them that we care. Maybe we, you have a welder in your town who wants to make some beautiful little welded containers for hanging baskets on your parking meters so people want to put a dime or a nickel or a quarter in. You can make money now. Think about this. Maybe it could be your renaissance you know, coin collection thing and people put money in there for that reason. So going back to bigger plantings, here we have St. Louis, and I love the fact that they had these hanging baskets um, that had uh, different types of um, the sweet potato vine in it, and then they also, and coleus, and then they also matched in this one particular area the baskets with the hanging baskets on the left-hand side that were going down the main streets of St. Louis, Missouri. So when we're talking about the showing of flowers, we're talking about giving you flower dollars, which were mentioned earlier today. So from $100 to $500 worth of flower dollars go to you. And it's to encourage you to plant annuals. Now, for, we're now in, going into our 13th year. So in the beginning, we kept saying, add, add perennials, add shrubs, add trees. And we did want you to do that. But we didn't want you to do that in lieu of planting annuals so that you have color all summer long. So we're asking you to put the color back in. Yes, continue with perennials, shrubs, trees. Those are the backbones of your garden. When winter comes, and if you just had annuals, it's going to look like you have crypts all over town. We 
don't want to see just these little beds where we, somebody may have been buried. No, we really want to see the bones, the trees, shrubs, etc. So um, here at the entrance to this garden, they do have a bit of color. But of course, in the park, you have this, this nice uh, allay of trees, etc. And here we have helenium, and we have um, uh, what else is in here? We have some iris. We have lab lab growing up the green fence. And notice the fence is green. Chain link fences that are just silver metal look cold and they don't look very inviting. So if you have these fences, paint them green or paint them black and they'll disappear. And when you grow something up, then they look a whole lot better. So um, we, when we give you the flower dollars, um, we want you to, you know, you have to meet our flower dollars halfway. And we all heard that we could wait till June and get some stuff from the garden center that they haven't sold. And that's wonderful, and I'm glad they're doing it. But we also want you to encourage you to get those flowers in as early as possible so that they can get established, so they have a good root system, so that when July comes, they're ready for the heat and the humidity. And those droughty days when you're not there right away first thing in the morning, maybe not till 11, 12, 1, and they're flat. So the earlier you can get in there after the last frost and plant your annuals, the better off you are. You can always go and add. You have to use them by a certain date, remember. But you can always go back and add more. But try to get the basics of your annual flowers in as soon as possible. Um, so here was another site that was rehabilitated. And I wanted to show you um, the, the, when you have the right um, uh, selection of plants, how well it can, it can work. And I like a path that has a sweep of something, the same thing, on both sides. It just feels comfortable to walk down it. And it's a main thoroughfare. So you're going to get people walking through pretty quick, which is really what you want to do. This is at the top of a stairway. You don't want people standing there looking at individual plants at the top of the stairs and people trying to get up and through. So this allows you, with the same plants on the same side, to just keep going because you know what you're looking at and, and you're done with it then. But look at the height of the Cleome. And they have some cannas in here. Um, they have a color. A flash of color with salvia in the back. They have some nice Zelkova trees. They have a bit of turf just to take your eye off everything. It can get a little crazy with too much flowers. And uh, believe it or not, I can't believe I just said that. And, uh, and, and it's a nice park, nice renovated park. And that was in Akron, Ohio. So spring is coming. And the best thing that you can do is have those bulbs planted in your beds to excite your neighbors in your own gardens and to excite people in your public places and to say, listen, Renaissance is coming. Spring is coming. Have grape hyacinths. Have tete -a tete daffodils. Have them all there and say, get excited. Aren't you excited today seeing all of this and the bulbs everywhere? This is what excites people. And you can get them to be your volunteers because they're going to wonder, who's welcoming me all the time? And then you can continue that color as they have done here in Monticello with just a spl you know these wild splashes of color in just the right places right in the city. In Bexley, Ohio, they have huge rotaries. And we have a few. I know the, the two that I go through in Liberty all the time. Wouldn't it be great to plant them with these sweeps of color? And because people are going around them at 15 to 20 miles an hour, you want to make sure that it is all the same plant in a larger sweep of color because they're going pretty fast and they're not going to notice the you know, small, specific, intricate designs of flowers. Even community gardens can look great. Don't you just want to walk through this and see what they're growing? It looks orderly. Again, they have taken the sides and just put one type of plant material in there. So you can say, OK, this looks good. I'm going to walk here, stop. And some other ideas now. One way to get people excited about doing something about their own yard, instead of you complaining about it, you know, do some Freudian stuff. Go to the other side and say, why don't we have a contest? Why don't we ask people to sign up to be the best blooming garden in Calicoon? And then we'll have a weekly contest, or we'll have a monthly contest even. And then at the end of the season, get a $10 gift certificate from a store in town, ask them to donate it to you, and, and uh, give them a reward at maybe a potluck volunteer thank you dinner.
But what you can do is get this hype started and um, you, you, you know, award the winner a weekly or monthly and make sure you have a sign up. People love to have signs in front of their house that say, I'm a winner, you know, I did something. So here's the best bloom and garden in Coshocton. And uh, for that week, and they had decided they would look at the weeks from the time that the judges were coming and work back. Oh, we have six weeks from our last frost date to the judges come. So we're going to have six week contest and we're going to get people excited because when the judges come, they're going to see all these great gardens and it worked. And uh, here in Northeast Pennsylvania, they did the same. And this lady, I mean, the house was just throwing up flowers. There were flowers everywhere. Um, it was uh, very nicely done. So we can see why she won. And then they wanted to continue it to some problem businesses in town. So they went to the businesses and asked if they would be in a business contest. And they got um, these award signs for them as well. And these businesses cleaned out all the weeds and just put a plain uh, brown mulch down. And they did some whiskey barrels up with some cosmos and petunias. It was easy for them to take care of. It's, it's not anything that you're going to be taking notes, so I want to do this. But it was something. And it was better than nothing. And this was in Guernsey. And they just, they went overboard. Um, you know, there were flowers everywhere in this town, different conditions, but still they're annuals. So that means we can grow them too, as long as we have the right annuals. And we do, we took that guesswork out of it for you using the Renaissance collection. And it spread to the businesses in Guernsey. And here was the hotel that we stayed at. And there were flowers everywhere everywhere. It was incredible. The fever was spreading. And so it can happen right here in, in Liberty as well. If we didn't have the azaleas blooming, um, it would probably look a little drab. But with a blooming shrub in there, it looks nice. And there are open spaces. They're just waiting for annuals to go in there. Look at those nice open spaces for the rest of the year. But these are the bones of the garden. And the, the evergreen shrubs are going to to look nice year round. Encourage businesses to do that. So here on the public spaces, what do you do? Those huge uh, expanses as people are coming to your town, or the judges are coming to your welcome sign, which on the back should say thank you for coming, by the way. Um, what, let's have a sweep of something. Have Girl Scouts youth plant bulbs in the fall. And then my suggestion would be do black-eyed Susans or day lilies or something in here so that it does disguise that withering yellowing foliage um, you know, once the daffodils are finished. And make sure that you look at those cold areas like we saw in the Czech Republic, or it could have been in Liberty but wasn't and isn't in Gibbons here because they've planted some plants. They've put um, a bench in. It's a nice bus stop, and it's a place that's kind of shielded on the corner with color. And I think they did a really good job with this. We can incorporate this idea into some of our designs. And so in Chicago, uh, Mayor Daley got all excited like the Garys did. And he came back to the United States after a, a trip to Europe and said, why can't we do this here too in Chicago? And so they started um, a business contest down Michigan Avenue. And these are all business um, drawn designs and planters. And it went viral down Michigan Avenue. They were competing with one another. It, it, it was wonderful. So where do you start? You start with our, our Renaissance collection first, because we already have tried and true plants that do well in Sullivan County. But you can also go to websites like Better Homes and Gardens. And there they have you know, these mixes of, of uh, things. You can make your own recipes. Or um, the people who give you the new idea book, which you'll take home today. Um, you can go to Pro Proven Winners, and you can look at their recipes for a good container or in-ground planting. You can go places and visit. Um, this is Meadowbrook Farm in Pennsylvania, which was a display garden for All American Selections. All you need to do is Google All American Selections. Um, uh, or give them a call, email them, and ask them for the list of display gardens for 2013. And you can go to these gardens and see what's growing well. And I would go a little bit more north of here. Buffalo, New York has a wonderful garden walk every year. There's uh, 265 gardens that you can go and visit. So go up to Buffalo 
definitely zone four, if not zone three, and get some good ideas from some hardcore gardeners up there. Speak to people. You could start small, like our fitness center here, with just a few flowers right in front. But again, I would urge you to put a shrub even the first year in there. Because once the frost comes and whip, wipes this out, you're not going to see anything for six months of the year. And you really want to avoid that. And just remember to have a nice mix of colors. Here we are using Senorita Rosalita uh, Cleome in this pot with the sweet potato with the petunias, you have three different plants, different textures, different leaf shapes. It's really going to be a stunning uh, uh, ta-da for the judges to say, wow, I like that. Look at your trouble spots and say, you know, we really could make this look better in town before people come. So why don't we start with getting rid of the weeds? And then why don't we plant some flowers against that wall? And then this tree was in front of it. They pruned it. And then they just put some nice annuals for a spot of color there. And it looks a whole lot better than that did. And I won't even show you the other side. That looked pretty bad. Um, so uh, uh, here in Never Sink, thousands of people, as I mentioned earlier, come to visit. And so they're coming to a town near you and that would be the judges. So you want to make sure that you have a lot of color for a showing of flowers. Talk amongst one of your, your, yourselves and decide what you do want to plant in your, in your town. Talk to us today. Call me. That's why I'm here now at Sullivan Renaissance to come out and meet with you and we'll come up with ideas that are sustainable, that are long-term gardens, that you will be spending less money in the long run if you do it right from the start. So if you go to the Longaberger factory outlet in Ohio, you can get some ideas. And here I thought, you know, they have these mirror beds. And it looked really nice to have very simple plant material, red and white, on both sides. Because there was so much going on in this area with other areas that had color and flowers. I thought, you know, this is probably a good thing that this was just so simple. And then when you have an area like the Loomis area, um, uh, association was taking care of this bed where they had a lot of color because people were driving pretty fast at this intersection. So here they have tall Becky um, uh, daisies and they have some structure year round um, with their evergreens and they have uh, shrubs in here and they have a little bit of everything. And it's okay from time to time to pass on your project to another group and go start someplace else. So you can just morph groups to take care of it. And sometimes it's more fun and it doesn't become a job then. It's like, listen, we've worked with this garden. We're, little, we're bored of it. We want you to do something new and exciting or take over it. So just an idea you can think about. So those flower dollars are going to be really important to you. Um, and as I said, there is a deadline for them. Um, it is the end of June. I don't know the exact date for this year. I'm sorry. Um, but use them and use them well. Um, how, now, there's more category Cs, but I'm going to ask this question again because there wasn't a, a fuller room. How many people are applying for category A grants, a single element? And B, OK, and C is the, OK, so you have like $500 in, in flower dollars to use. Um, and they can go a long way because it's really $1,000 worth of annual flowers. That's a lot of color. Spread it out around the town because the, the judges are coming to look at it all over the place. So I'm going to stop right here for any questions that people have. Um, no, I would look at um, I would look at some. It depends on what you've tried first of all, and what is in that soil. Is it close to the road? Sidewalk. Okay, so there's road, and then sidewalk, and then this bed close to the building. So the one thing that you want to um, uh, first see about is maybe there's salt in there. Do you salt the sidewalks and all? Um, 
could be one reason why the plants wouldn't do good. So you definitely you may have to replace that soil with new soil. I would add compost to it as well. You can use evergreens. You could use that microbiota that we talked about. I don't know what your width is. That's going to go about three feet. And so you could put, you know, depending on how long it is, they get six feet wide. You can put just one of those with your annuals on either side. And you know, you most certainly could put boxwoods in there, and they come in all shape and form, and that would give you green. And there is your quintessential dwarf Alberta spruce, but the problem with those is that they get um, spider mites, and particularly up against the wall of a building, um, it's going to be hot, and it's spider mite heaven. So, um, you know, I try to steer people away from dwarf Alberta spruce. Um, let's say you can use ink berry, um, uh, holly, uh, the, that'll work. Or you just may want to consider using something like uh, the red twig dogwood or the uh, yellow twig dogwood, something that's going to give you some color on the twigs itself. It doesn't necessarily have to be green for the winter. It could be a different color. And that would work. And with those, with the red twig and uh, dogwood, yellow, etc., make sure you don't get any branches bigger than your pinky or your index finger. When they start getting too fat, they start getting brown um, and take on the older bark color. So you want to make sure that you cut them back all the time, the oldest um, of the twigs, so you have new coming up that keeps that red or yellow color. Other questions? Yes? See, it's happening. It's happening, and they're doing it. Not yet. I will. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I'm sure Colleen or someone here must have taken pictures, so I will definitely take those. I have to show them like, like baseball cards when I go someplace. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're watered well. So again, make sure you water a hanging basket until, I'm going to say it, it pees all over you. You want the water to come out. When you water a container on the ground, make sure you water it till you see the water coming out in rivulets. You want to water well. And sometimes on a hot day, you need to water once because it's so dry, and then water again, and then it will be absorbed. So I'm sure that um, in Fallsburg, they are watering these, and they are fertilizing these baskets, and they're not allowing them to get stressed out. Once the hanging baskets get stressed out, sometimes it's hard to bring them back to the glory they could have been. No, they don't hold enough soil mass. That's the problem. The hanging bags is what she's talking about. They, yeah, they do. But you have to be married to them, like three times a day. So, Any other questions? Yes. Turfus, T-U-R-F-A-C-E, and it's a calcined clay, um, and it's used in um, athletic fields in the soil to hold moisture, but it'll hold moisture in your soil mix. Yes. No, I would use it in containers. You could use it in beds, too. Um, you, can, you can use it in beds, too. It's used in the soil of athletic fields. Right, right. You would, you, would, you would be making a recipe, a big bowl of dough first, and that dough is going to be your promix with some compost, with some turfus, and with some osmocote or nutricote in that soil mass. No, no, no. You're mixing it in. You're like you're making chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Well, I usually make it in a wheelbarrow. I mean, that's, that's what I'm mixing it in. It's the biggest thing that I have uh, to use. So I'm throwing maybe a half a bale of, of Pro Mix in, and then I'm adding a bucket of 
like a joint compound bucket of compost, and then I'm adding a shovel full. So I'm going to say a shovel full is five cups of turfus um, to it. So one 40-pound bag of turfus goes a long way. So I think all the towns should get together if they're not carrying turfus, so they can buy a whole pallet of it, and you can each buy a bag of it, and it would be worthwhile for him to bring it in. There you go. Other? Hmm? That works. It works, right, Peter? It's great stuff. Holds that moisture in. Both. Talk to people. You never know when you're talking to people what they know and if they want to be volunteers. If, oh, uh, I, will, I will come and look at their projects, absolutely. And while we're there for next year house, of course, we're going to go in and I'll talk to you too about that. So that's OK for a nice cup of tea. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank you very much. Remember, showing of flowers is really important. So I want you to plant. And don't worry about the plant thieves. We won't really compost them. See the feet on the right-hand side there? Hard to see. And uh, I want you to relax and enjoy yourself. And it may be at La Polte Park in Liberty. I want you to relax in your own backyard. And I want you to do a great job so you have something to crow about. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you're welcome.